Um, ask the councillor to come open up our Pui Wutta. Morena, um, councillors. Um, I have. I just want to acknowledge Councillor Pahuruhuruwa and Councillor Rea that will be attending via Zoom. Um, I've just seen uh, Councillor Parata just walk past, so she should be in here shortly. I have an apology for lateness from the Mayor, who plane got delayed last night. Oh, got cancelled, sorry, last night, and she should be on her plane returning uh, home right now. She should be taken over at around about 10 a.m. Do I have a mover for apology? Moved by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Cranston. All those in favour? Uh, one thing that I'd just like to let everybody know, if you could please uh, use a clear speaking voice as well. Our colleague, Councillor Thompson, has just had an ear operation, so just need to be clear and... Uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Clear and loud, I guess, with our, with our words. So if we could please accommodate them, that would be great. Just really want to acknowledge our staff. Kia ora tato. Uh, let's kick into it. I'll take us to page five. Our minutes. We have a move there. by Councillor Cranston, seconded by Councillor Gregory. Any matters arising? If not, um, I'll move the minutes. All those in favour? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Take us to the government's work plan, page 10. So, so sorry, sorry for that. Just put on your, um, we were a little bit late with our updates and missed the um, terms of it getting in there. So there was an old update in there. So what's on your desk is the updated work plan. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions in regards to our work plan? Let's go to the next part. No days of absence. I do want to make uh, an acknowledgement. I'd like to, um, I'd like to formally acknowledge uh, those councillors of ours who stood for uh, Tamaroro and made uh, their uh, have made their way to uh, to our national competition of Matiti. Um, not not only our councillors but also our staff. One of our members uh, is, is is in here as well. It was great to see uh, not only ourselves up on the stages. I want to acknowledge Councillor Rea and that winning team Waikiriri. Um, the, the, all, all of our teams that stood were amazing. Um, yeah, it was really, really, it, I was filled with a lot of pride seeing a lot of us standing uh, up there in our professional forms of these uh, three, um, three of us who are here at council. But then there were also those of us who were standing on ju uh, just as support of the Kopapa. I stood for Wayne Yeri or Mua. There were several others that stood for other groups. So it was, it was a really, Really great day for us as Detaira and it was really great to see uh, those of us who are from council uh, at, um, standing up on behalf of the community too. So just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, I see Councillor Ren, you have your hand up. Morena Tato. Um, I just also wanted to acknowledge the Tairafati Multicultural Society and the um, run, Color Run for Diversity that was held on Saturday. A couple of hundred participants from across Te Tairafati and just a, an awesome whānau day out. And I ran into um, um, Councillor Gregory and her mokopuna um, there on the day and just lots of family really enjoying um, the Tairafati Multicultural Society really put it on um, after the event. There was free kai and water and music and just lots of kids going crazy and having fun with their families. So ngā mihi nui the, to the um, Tairawhiti Multicultural Society. Um, just a, a brief um, tribute to uh, Wai Chambers of the Hospital Fano from Waitri, who passed away her, her tangi for his service in the US, um this morning and I'll hop out to... Um, to 
also the recent passing of um, Matua Ramagi, who was really instrumental in our, our social services space. He was, when I entered into the social service space, Antonio will know him really well from. Uh, that there were those of us who were around at the start when Tawafi was, um, uh, but began, Ra was one of those, uh, one of those ones that was just part of that. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll move us from those acknowledgements and tributes and into the next parts. We have no public interest for deputations, extraordinary business, notices of motion, agenda business. Therefore, I'll take us to page 13, our exciting treasury management policy and procedure map. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is very much into the details of how we operate, and it gives each of the parts of this um, is the delegations for each decision that we do for everything uh, financial. Um, the umbrella statement has been said that you've already passed is the investment policy and the liability policy, but this goes into more, more details than you probably ever want to know. Um, but it is there and actually shows the full transparency of, of what the decisions <coughs> and how it comes um, into it. Um, as set out um, in the first introduction, what were the main changes from what was before? Uh, mainly some of the alignment just to some of those overall parameters that's coming from the liability policy, which in turn is a reflection of your financial strategy and your three-year plan, which is how much debt are we to have, what does that equate to for a uh, per rate of a person, uh, for population base, uh, what is your interest measures, uh, etc. cetera, with it. So that basically is, is the, the higher subset of where this comes under. Um, and then there was some just clearing out where there was repeated uh, the investment policy and the uh, financial, uh, sorry, the liability policy in that. But basically, uh, the main changes within there is in alignment with how we do and how uh, we're working with our business now, which is where we have a quite a, a little bit. Uh, we have a higher debt portfolio, and, and it's making sure that we've got uh, our management of that as we're lending it into, rather than a short seven to eight years time frames. We're taking it um, longer, so it's prudent financial management. Happy to take any questions that you may have on this policy. Question to uh, Councillor Cranston, Councillor Alder. Yeah, thanks for that. <clears throat> I spent four or five years working for uh, New Zealand Home Loans, and our drive was teaching people how to pay their mortgages off quicker and cheaper. So I'd be concerned with a, a policy that's stretching our lending out by 20 years. We did used to focus on interest rates, but it wasn't our sole focus. Our sole focus in there was reducing the term of your mortgage because that was a far greater cost than interest rate changes. So an interest rate of 1% over the extra 20 years from going to a 30 to 40 years on a million is an extra million. So if you times it up to 30 million or whatever, extending the timelines out on a mortgage are incredibly, incredibly expensive. So I'd be concerned <coughs> Uh, weren't meeting our total net servicing costs, which should not ex exceed limits in the, uh, in the lenders' covenants. It's really important to be uh, intergenerational, having that inter intergenerational thing, but at what cost? And the cost of extending our mortgages by 20 years is really, really expensive. So I, I would want to know there was a true analysis of taking our lending out to an uh, extended timeline because at the end of the day, it's money for nothing. Um, you know, if you look at, if you look at a 30 year, uh, going 30 to 20, on, on just a million, and I know our numbers are a lot bigger than a million, it would be an extra 236,000 on an extra 1%, but like I say, on an extra 20 years, it's millions. So I, I, I'd really want to see some really good analysis of, the, of how that's going to pan out. Yeah, uh, and it's a good point, um, worth it. What, what the main parts of it is your wastewater treatment plant. And so if you have got a loan that is for 30 years, but the life of the assets is for 50, you're concentrating your significant repayments within that 30 years, but the benefit goes over to the 50 um, periods. Yes, you've got interest costs, but the ability to 
uh, match those costs as it's being used, even with the interest cost, means you're actually front-loading it on the first few generations. And so whereas before, um, a lot of our <coughs> wasn't the heavy loading um, costs that we had before, especially with the infrastructure, um, and now it's to say, of those ones that we have that are significant costs, and they really do have a longer period of, of a useful life, um, then it's better to actually uh, almost have about half of its useful life, but you don't actually have 30%, which is only a third. So that, so like the flood protection schemes or anything like that, which may have 100 years, we're actually saying, and some of them might be 40 years, as opposed to 30. Um, so it really is looking at each and every loan that we actually have, and is there parts of those that should be increased because the life is longer, and the use of those that are receiving the benefits is over a longer period of time. The, the extent of that, if you didn't apply that within the things, would be significant rates increases, even in this uh, three-year plan. So we can come back to you, <coughs> but they would be significant increases if you didn't apply that, be um, with the amount of the principal repayment, you, you've actually reduced it down. Yeah, I'd want to see some analysis on the numbers because uh, I understand what you're saying, but the money for nothing aspect of it, you know, you, it's, it's not money for the wastewater department, it's money for the bank, that extra time. True, um, but the extent of the, the cost is on those rate payers, um, more on those rate payers that are receiving it today than those people, rate payers that may receive it in that uh, years 31 to 50 basically the cost haven't actually been spread equally. And that's the concept of it, is actually to transfer it over that, um, so you allow it, otherwise you're front-loading on those uh, rate payers of today. Um, but we can give you more information with regards to those, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll go um, Councillor Older, Councillor Robinson, <coughs> Councillor Thompson, then Councillor Hart. Thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of questions. One, I don't fully understand page 39, uh, five, 1.3 um, and there's debt interest policy balance variable. Could you can go to an example for that? So um, this is called a corridor policy. So when we have in the Treasury, it says um, what is the extent of your loans that you're covering through swaps, your interests cover, if you like, an insurance kind of cover for the extent of floating rates. And that says um, from things that it used to be from year up to year seven, so for argument's sake, your loan, loan portfolio, it used to say of that, your, the amount of that loan portfolio, you're covering that kind of insurance cover for your floating rates going over higher, it used to be 40%. We're saying because our uh, loan portfolio is bigger, we need to extend that cover for a longer so we don't have that shocks which may go from a, um, a kind of a six years. So basically, if you like, it's a corridor between the upper limit and lower limit. We need to be within that for the cover. Right, thank you. So next couple of questions. Um, when would we and why would we use um, foreign currency? Um, we don't use it that much, but we did. Uh, we have to have it in a policy just in case we do. What we did uh, occur, um, well, the wastewater treatment when it was first the phase one, and there was a lot of steel, um, and we had to purchase that. We were hedging the cost of overseas um, materials yep. um, with the foreign, yeah. Well, we don't, we, it's very rarely that we would have that. Final question, how, how does this document, apart from exact bits, how does it vary from um, a similar document in another council? Oh, uh, pretty much, because it's, uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper uh, do it, it's pretty much standard. And they would say, are you a departure for something else? And that's where they bring us back into those kind of things, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Holder. Councillor Robinson, then Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Chair. Um, before, Pauline, you said that um, if the term was not extended out, it would result in significantly higher rates. But I would have thought that the current 10-year plan and all the projections we've seen for rates going <laughs> forward um, have all been calculated on those current existing 30-year terms. So I don't see how 
um, by not extending the term out to 50 years, those rates, um, protected rates, which we've seen, you know, we've always said this is hump and then it gets less, would, would suddenly magically increase. So, so just be for clarification, um, they do they increase that it is uh, for the flood protection, and some of the others have got them beyond the 30 years. So this is trying to make sure that we're in policy with regards to it. Uh, yeah, the loans do extend them out. I I, I um I really um, support what Councillor Cranston has said. The risk is that we push out the terms to 50 years, we'll simply use all those 50 years and the additional costs, which isn't ca captured fully in here, is going to be significant. And our current budget projections are based upon 30-year terms, which are the existing terms. And I would like to see some um, in-depth analysis of that to show that we've done our job properly on behalf of our community in assessing that the cost is either bearable or it's not bearable um, before this paper's passed. So I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with this proposed policy at this point junction without some further analysis, so that's where I stand. Thank you Councillor Robson, Councillor Thompson, then Councillor Parata. Thank you Madam. The notes I've got yeah, along the same lines, yeah, I'm just concerned we, we keep changing policy and increasing the loan. Last meeting we increased the loan limit and then this meeting we're increasing the length of the loan. I just feel yeah, we seem to be digging ourselves a hole, seem to be spending money um, we don't, don't have. I think the things we borrow money for, to me, they're not really assets or investments, and that we're not going to get any financial return down the track. We're just going to have more appreciation and maintenance costs. So, yeah, the, the more we borrow, the sort of worse worse off we're going to be. Um, you, you mentioned the life of the <coughs> 50 years when you build a house. You, you build it for a minimum of 50 years, but the loans on the houses are always only 20 years. 30 years max, so yeah, sort of not too sure about that. Um, yeah, you yeah, realise um, <coughs> times at the moment with inflation in Gabriel and, and our, our limits were um, less than the LGFA, so it's sort of you yeah, take into account that. But I think when we're talking about our three year plan. We need to be mindful that this a lot of the money we're spending isn't money we got. It's money money we're going to be borrowing, sort of borrowing what we don't have really. I just yeah, feel we're sort of yeah, digging ourselves a hole for the future. But I would just say we haven't got the money. Does it counter um, in conversations with it? So we we had this is this is not. Paul, it's usually exceptions that when, when you say that you may need to increase it because it's actually the underlying asset is longer or it's significantly, it's material, those kind of costs. So the original conversations with Treasury, um, with it, and, uh, and also with other councils, um, was their extent of their loans, what are they doing? And effectively, uh, it is that greater parameters. And Treasury, central government said, well, you've got underlying assets with 80 years, why aren't you borrowing against that? And we've said there's a prudent level that we actually need to look at and have a policy that allows us that variability if it does and needs us to look at it in terms of how do we actually apportion those costs as the assets are being used. And so uh, this policy allows us to traverse that period of time as we are uh, trying to manage it um, and as most of our debt as we have said it we, we're not in the business of perhaps having investments it's just in the business of giving service um, and the service levels that we actually have relate to uh, infrastructure predominantly and that is a manifestation of how are we going to do it how do we spread those costs over the period of time? And this is not going to the board lines. I'm very, very much aware of saying things use what is prudent. Um, and how do we do that? And how do we manage that over a period of time? And it's not the policy, as in what I'm saying, is not too dissimilar to what other councils do. And it, where we were before, we didn't have that much debt. It is increasing because of our needs and requirements that we actually have, and this is prudent to move with it and have the ability to have the agility if it does um, as we need it. 
supplementary. Just a supplementary. Um, with, with the bike category three buyout, is that after the interest free? Is that going to put them on our loan as well? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Parata. <coughs> um, some of my questions have already been answered. Um, I'm, I'm sort of reassured to know that this is primarily a standard policy across council, so that's good to know. Um, I share the same concerns about extending the life of the loan from 30 to 50 years for the reasons outlined. Um, but also just wanted to know if we, do we as council take loans for the maintenance of infrastructure assets? No. Is it build only? Well, yes. Okay. When it's something new, when it's, if we assume that we already have something and we're replacing it, we don't have the loans proxy for that is what we receive in rates for the depreciation costs. And so it's only new, wastewater treatment type new, uh, anything else that we didn't have on our network before, we need to borrow, just like if you were extending yes. something on yeah. your house. Okay. Um, so then my other sort of supplementary question um, is, say we do extend the life of the, the loan to 50 years, our generation starts paying the first part of it, the next generation pays the next part of it. What happens to their aspirations when they need to build something? They they'll still be committed to that loan, right? This, this decision we made will then be for them to carry and then figure out how they're going to pay for their aspirations. Is that correct? Those costs will go over 50 years in alignment to the decision that was made to uh, purchase that asset at that first time. So yes, those costs are spread over that period of time that those assets are unlikely um, to be used. And is this inclusion, sorry, one more supplementary question, Chair, is, um, is this inclusion of the extension of the life of the loan primarily to do with the water treatment plant? Or do we think it applies further than that particular project or mahi? Um, it's only actually applying on the very long life assets. Um, so for argument's sake, there are, where we know that and it's not all of it, but it, most of it in this plan is to say uh, the flood protection, where we have to put in 10% um, of those. Those assets are likely to have um, 80 plus years, and we're saying, okay, a portion of that makes sense to actually extend the loan over that uh, more than a 30 year concentrated period because actually the assets has got double, uh, at least double the life of all that we're doing. So it's there. There's a little bit of the $5 million um, of the, uh, the pool because the, the cost of you were uh, putting, the, the building itself lasts uh, beyond that. Um, but some of those costs are portioned uh, for a longer period of time. So it's up and up like to 40 years. So the maximum 50 would be, it would be the exception rather than the norm. Yeah, okay. Um, so if that is the case, um, can we have my suggestion, perhaps, is that that be more explicit, um, that it is the exception, not the rule. Um, and then I think maybe some thinking around the, um, the reasoning. I suppose part of the, re the reason I'm not fully um, endorsing this part is, is some of the um, justification for it. I think perhaps what we're talking about is the value of the asset and what it means for the community. It's <coughs> Um, that's why we spread it, that's why we share it, as opposed to, well, it's got a really long life so everyone should contribute to it. I wonder if there might be value in putting some more thinking um, or a few more bullet points into the policy that um, talks about what kind of asset it is, its importance to our region and our community, and therefore the longer, the longer time, as opposed to it's got a long life so everyone has to participate in it? Certainly, but again, the financial is, can you, what's the rationalisation of spreading it? And yeah. fundamentally would be, it is by exception, it is uh, the, the sort of the materiality or the cost of it 
and warranting that and it would also be saying what is the kind of the life of it it warrants some longer term um, you, there could be some other frameworks but again those other frameworks doesn't fit under uh, so much uh, if you like a financial which is a prudent yeah, yeah. yeah. okay Kapo. well those were my thoughts thank you thank you councillor parts before i kick it over to councillor gregory um i i did just want to say I, I agree with the strategy of um, the over the lifetime of that asset for the parts of our community who um, pay for um, their parts uh, when those assets are live for them. They're, these aren't assets in the sense of um, things that we can sell, like a house. A house you can pay it off and then sell and then you get that back. We're talking about flood protection, we're talking about our wastewater management, uh, treatment plants, things like that, which you actually can't sell at the end of it. They're, they're uh, infrastructure that the community needs over a long period of time, which I think is actually uh, a, um, a sensible idea for the cost of that to be spread out over the generations of those who will use it. Um, because what we will do is we will, we will be the last generation to pay for something back, and then we're creating something. So those things will drop off, um, hopefully, under affordability of future generations. Um, so I do agree with that in, in, in principle. I just wanted to say that before I kick. Oh, actually, one other thing too. We have a huge agenda today, and it is 25 past nine, and we haven't even gone past first page. So just <laughs> giving us the heads up in regards to that. Um, so, Councillor Gregory. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, through the Chair, could I please ask what percentage of rates um, goes uh, what percentage of debt servicing is paid for by rates? Um, I would have to come back to you with regards to it. Uh, I know, say, the interest, yeah, I'd have to come back to give you the particular ones. Interest costs go up, but you're talking the whole amount, so I, I will need to, um, it's increasing, so I'll probably need to come back to you with regards to that. What question are you going to move the council? I'm going to move. And, and can I also comment that inflation eats long term <coughs> loans payments? And what I've been right in saying, we're still paying for the original WIPO banks, um, and it's probably a very minimal amount that we're paying. So I'm going to pay that back. Do you have a seconder? Yeah. Seconded by Councillor Tibble. All those in favour? Aye. All those opposed? Carried. All right, page 76. Debt is management policy. Oh, was there a opposition to the paper. Oh, I just didn't, I wanted to get my head around whether supporting the paper would warrant a full time period of time, so, but I guess you're coming back with it, so. Yeah, we'll come back to if there's some updates so you can get that, um, what, what it means. Yeah, Good morning, Ms. Greg. Um, so, this is again another details kind of operational things that actually we're doing, but we're also trying to give uh, a little bit of transparency about uh, the process when we consider that uh, obviously we, there are rates to be collected uh, or any kind of debt uh, that council uh, uh, may have um, in terms of it. So uh, this is perhaps, um, set from 2021, this is a, a prior to revise um, update um, of it, um, happy to take any questions um, and things that you may have with regards to this particular policy. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Council Tell. Um, yeah, just right at the start, just a little bit confusing. <coughs> Page 76, just right um, in the summary, it states the draft debt, debt is management policy is focused on the collection of rates. In any other debt. In brackets, it's got IE excludes rates, dog and friendless and parking fines. I'm just so what what um what collection, spot, be <laughs> what collection are we actually collecting if we're excluding rates, dog no. and friendless and parking fines? It's a, it is a type, it should be excludes dog infringements and parking fines, yeah. instead of which rates is in there. So thank you. <coughs> any other questions? Councillor Elder, one thing, Councillor Thompson. Again, how does this differ from other councils' um, similar things, and where does it differ, and why? Um, I think probably 
we're consistent with other councils regarding um, sundry debt. With rates, um, most other councils use the provisions in the Rating Act as the uh, um, first call, which means that we can go down the process of um, making a, a claim against the first mortgagee for rate payments. And that's a very coercive action, and what that involves is the mortgagee being able to take um, cash or money out of a person's bank account um, as the first resort. Uh, what we tend to do is um, take a more lenient approach, I suppose, or a more um, customer-focused approach, and we work with the parties um, a lot in the preliminary stages, and we would also uh, use the likes of Baycorp um, first before we went down that mortgage process. If we work with the parties for too long and it then drops into the five-year period, um, we're exempt. What, what, how do we kind of stop that from happening? If we analyse the debt and look at um, our, our, our largest debts and we would look at those first, um, we do it within we do it the following year, so right. we can't go into that process until after the 30th of June of the previous year. So we always, um, we do it every year and we start that process um, usually around this time of year, April. So. Um, thank you, Councillor Holder. Um, Councillor Thompson and then Councillor Parata. Just on page 98, I think. Mean, it mentions a collection process um, after 90 days, it goes to a collection agent. Um, how many actually go to a collection agent and what sort of success rate does that have? We use a collection agent where we have been unable to collect the debt internally uh, through our, our processes. Sometimes it's a dispute, if it's a dispute it goes back to the section and they um, review it with the customer. We use um, Baycorp to collect the um, any that we are unable to collect in that first instance, and we have a reasonably good um, collection through Baycorp. So they, they do manage to um, keep quite a lot on our behalf, and it comes straight back to us, and we pay a commission on that. How, how many just roughly make it to Baycorp? So, so some of the things over um, with COVID um, and Gabriel, uh, we at that stage, we weren't actively doing um, uh, so much with the Baycorp and the mortgagee. We put the hiatus on the, the mortgagee process. Um, but uh, in terms of the numbers, you will be able to tell how much we go for the Baycorp. But uh, this April, we're reviewing uh, under the principles um, that they haven't been in contact, that they haven't had any progress payments, that we actually uh, can't identify anything else, and then they will be activated at this time. Um, so, but I, I just want to bring up one point. We report on this, though, this part yeah, here. We and, monitor and, it all. Yeah, yeah, and it gets reported, and again, it's separate. Yes, it this is about the policy of the so we'll see, see You do. Yes. Yeah. So the, the next update on that is September, and we'll mm -hmm. make sure that we have how many Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Parata, then Councillor Ahu Uriwai, then Foster and Tauka. Um, I, I think it's a good policy, to be honest. Um, I really want to, I don't know whether it's a all councils template or just us, um, but having the um, objectives of the Tūre Whenua Māori and how we want to um, apply those here in Te Tairawhiti, it's heartening that that's right up Right under strategic object objectives, I, I really want to um, acknowledge the Gisborne District Council for um, understanding the um, intricacies and the importance of Benua Māori, what it means to us, particularly when it comes to rates and collecting debt. So just wanted to acknowledge that as being a real positive and, um, and the bullet points here align with a much bigger um, regional objective. So ngā mahi nui. Um, the other thing is that um, while I understand this is a financial policy um, and one that 
specifically talks about how we manage um, um, there's a lot of talk here about the values of council, our approach, how we, it's, while it's financial, it's very human, um, and how we deal with people and how we try our best to um, make arrangements before we do things like go to bank or, or go to, to court. So I really wanted to um, acknowledge the approach and, and say that I appreciate that it feels like our people are being considered in this, that we want to walk alongside them whenever we're possible. I have no feedback except for those comments. Thank you. Add to that, I just want to acknowledge um, Angelie Brown and Kia. Angelie um, has done a lot of this and what you said, that's her heart and soul um, in terms of how she approaches things. <laughs> and the same thing um, is with Kia and those things. So. Uh, Angelie um, basically uh, developed um, this policy um, with those key things in mind. So, yeah. Woman, Councillor Pahuruhuriwa. Oh, a little bit of a proud auntie here, as I hear, listen to you say those words about Angelie. Um, and just agree with uh, Councillor Parata's sentiments. And morning out to everybody. Um, I just had a question about a couple of questions, page 96, 9.2, um, around the statement that, or they have said that we're a bit more human than what it says in here, in terms of the bank pays the customer's overdue rates if the bank has a mortgage over the customer's property. I'm just wondering if um, there's a lot of new homeowners in the tight Apiti, um uh, under Toitu Tairapiti housing and whether or not that's common knowledge and shared um, amongst uh, our housing providers, our iwi housing providers. Um, that's one question. The other one was on page 97, 9.4 on abandoned land. Um, I often find out about these notices shared with me through Facebook. Um, we I know it doesn't happen very often, but it is still seen as a form of alienation of our whenua. Um, what tools of communication are used apart from the advertisement that's put in the paper that many of our people don't read? Um, so it's just that those are just my questions about how do we how do we communicate um, how do we reach out to owners of land that we consider has been abandoned? How, um, you know, what tools do we use to, to make sure that we have done our absolute best to find um, the owners of the perceived abandoned land? Thank you, those are my two questions. Um, okay, so to start with, the, we haven't actually done an abandoned land sale or notice for probably well over 10 years. We, it's, it's, as soon as um, the sort of people came around that we shouldn't be um, doing an abandoned land sale for um, land that was previously Māori freehold land, we stopped immediately and we actually had one in the pipeline at that stage and we withdrew it. So we actually haven't done it for a long time. Um, the process to it involves working with the Māori land court um, and the trying to gain and get as much information and get a message out to owners where we can. So if we um, are stored in the process and we don't have contact details, which is the case usually for an abandoned land, so it's where we get no feedback or input from um, owners or people using the land. We work with the Māori Land Court to try and contact these people or family of those people. Um, then it gets advertised in the the newspaper and often what would happen is we get um, some of the neighbours um, come to us and, and either provide details or provide information about how to contact people in this instance. I think the other thing is that it doesn't always necessarily end in a sale. We can actually um, lease the land. We, it, it also gives council the right to lease the land for abandoned land. So, I mean, that would be something that we would look at um, before it, it got to that stage as well. So it's working with um, the Māori Land Court, um, uh, Te Tūmu Pairoa and um, um, other agencies before we get to that stage. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Craig. Uh, Councillor Foster. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm just happy to move this report. Um, it's an updated version of a previous management, um, debtors management policy, and um, I'm more than happy to, to move it. I just commend staff on the way it's been presented. It um, reads a lot easier. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Foster. They've been moved by Councillor Alder. I think it was seconded by Councillor. You second it then. <coughs> Tough, you had a quick comment to make at the end, or I don't, want to, I don't want to hold up proceedings here. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, uh, on but I will ask. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> one um, clarification on the comment you made earlier you said what uh, other can't we ask the question on what other councils do? You made the comment that um, a lot of other councils use basically, you know, they go to their mortgagee and then look at addressing it. And we go the other way where we, we run through a process where we get. 10% penalty added on to the instalments, and those instalments right through the year, and then it carries on and keeps going. I'm just wondering whether we, that's led to that we're doing people a favour by, by giving people time, but if you add up the penalties over that time onto what the original sum was, the biggest favour we could have done was go to the mortgagee and get it added on to their mortgage, because that one instalment, two instalments, Compared to what the, the, the actual amount will be when you get down the track or end up going to court to retrieve it, is a hell of a lot more. So I'm just wondering, you know, we think some of these things we do is, is helping people, this potentially is not actually creating a bigger debt by delaying it for a big period of time. So um, you know, I'm wondering whether, yeah, that may be, could be the thing. It, it can be just a few, yeah. And that there is the, there's also the angst that this caused. Um, so um, that's the, the way in it, um, and also Bay Corp um, has a credit rating that lasts from forever. So again, when we're trying to do it, we're trying to get them to actually enter into uh, progress, but it doesn't affect them. So there is those two things that we're trying to moderate, and we're actually trying to do it at that stage. But if there is no responses into this kind of element, then that is the, the next that we actually have. I understand what you're talking about, which is why we try to deal immediately to have with people that respond and come to us. When you don't get that response or that reach out or any other kind of a progress payment, then immediately shunts it to um, what do we actually have to do for the next steps. But that's the kind of the way up that we're actually just considering um, as well. Uh, what does it actually do to the ratepayer if they immediately have got a uh, bad call? And, um, and some of the angst is uh, if it comes off your available cash that's in your bank, you had it for something else and it was the amount for the rate. So we're, we're balancing all of those things, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. Thank you, Mr. Woman. Councillor Tupura. So I'm carrying <coughs> uh, 86, uh, 2.4 rate of emissions and postponement policy. Is there provision for um, application for remission based on poverty? Yes, I was, I was actually just going to add um, that um, a comment about the rate remissions um, to Councillor Kelfer's question. Yes, there is. We've got a hardship uh, policy in our rate remission policies. That's for the three-year plan at the moment. And yes, we um, certainly look at remitting rates for places of hardship. We um, also look at remitting penalties um, in cases where we're resolving debt collections. So the, the comment about it adding up we do take that into consideration if people make payment plans. And yes, we do have hardships that we can um, remit rates, we can extend payment times, and we can remit penalties. So, and yes, we do that frequently. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you very much, Ms. Greg. The papers have been moved by Councillor Alder, seconded by Councillor Foster. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Take us to page 106, for player statement of intent, RPB financial report. Thank you very much, Ms. Greg. So I'm just going to say the next three papers are very much for information. Uh, the extent that we are council is a council uh, shareholder in, and a minor shareholder in these council controlled organisations as such. Um, this is why uh, we get the process that you see, uh, their interim set of accounts and their statement of, of intents. Um, the first one on the, um, the list, which is... Is our bot list, which is mostly that we have their arrangements 
uh, shared services and the benefits that we actually have achieved from that is better buying within insurance policies. Um, pretty stand, but I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Do we have any questions? Councillor Cranston. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, Wildplex is a reasonably small organisation in terms of staff, and there's 37 projects for consideration. I just wondered whether we had any capacity in the prioritisation of those projects and how that all panned out, because there might be some that are favourable to us and others that others aren't. I see they're looking at health insurance, so I'm not sure whether that's health insurance projects for council staff or, or who that's for, because that could be incredibly expensive. So. I'm not sure what that health insurance would be. The other one was there's a significant amount of money held for crime prevention. Uh, it's obviously a project with under a million dollars, and just as interested to know what the crime prevention project was. So, yeah. um, so the health, uh, some some councils provide uh, health insurance for their staff. Um, not all; it's a mixture. So that's probably there was a request. That if it was extended in their policies, we do not have it on our current set of um, medical staff. Um, so that would be just extending it to it. And in our insurance policies, some of them, uh, we don't have those policies, we, but we adhere to a lot of them, so there's a mixture of those. So that would be there. I'm not sure with regards to, um, I'd have to come back to you and put it in the actions with what the crime um, prevention one and what the envisioned with that project. I'm not, don't have 100% uh, knowledge of what that is. So of the 37 projects, do we offer prioritisation that we'd prefer? Or? We do put, we put that in there into the mix um, as part of those listing, if there's something overarching with ours, um, and um, yeah, so we have, have the ability to contribute to saying this is really aligned to what we want. Councillor Cranston, any other questions? Councillor Foster. Happy to move it by Councillor Foster, uh, seconded. Seconded by Councillor Thompson. Yeah. No, all three of them. No, just just just. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Carried. I'll take us to page one three nine. Our GFA. So again, again the same sort of system. Whereas interim set of accounts and the statement of intent. Um, this is for. Um, all our external borrowings, uh, long-term debt. So this is our arrangement uh, uh, with them and there's, there's a share holdings of that. Um, this is how we become a council involved organisation and that is to report back to us. Happy to take any questions that you may have with regards to this paper. Questions in regards to this paper? Not going to move up. Councillor Robertson, seconded by Councillor Thompson. All those in favour? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Carried. Right. Um, take us to page 179, which is Regional Software Holdings Limited. Update cover. Again, this is the last in that triage of um, minor uh, council control organisations. Um, again, this is a kind of, as it says, what do they deliver in the shared services? by belonging to this uh, uh, group and we pay for what we um, receive in terms of the services uh, that we align um, sign up to. So happy to take any questions. Uh, yeah. Questions in regards to this paper? Um, Councillor Gregory. I'm happy to move it. So moved by Councillor Gregory. Second. 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 Do we have any questions in regards to this paper? If not, I'll move the paper. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, I think that the next two will be quite comfy. So we might break for morning tea now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we'll break for morning tea now. Difference with the point? Yeah. Um, I will take us now to, we're going to skip the um, GHL half yearly report and we'll go to page 274 and, and do the financial report. Just for, um, 
just, just to manage the conflict of the Fifth Amendment. Just for clarity, we're not going to skip it. We're going to. Oh, yeah, sorry. We're, we're, we're just going to move. Uh, report 104. Four. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to skip that table. We'll do it later on. Yeah. All right. I'll take us to page 274, which is the financial report. Um, I'll take mostly it is read. Um, it is the United States Reserve Bank basically the first eight months of our 23-24 year. It is said we're mostly on the on track where we expect it to be. However, there's a little bit on the bottom line, and the bottom line um, is still rather than what we expected uh, due to uh, uh, the dividend and purpose accounting recognition of swaps. Um, so those two sort of uh, uh, impact on that overall um, bottom line. Uh, with it, I just want to be aware that when we're forking something to the end of the year, there may be other variances that are coming through, and it relates. It will relate to as we're purchasing the category three. Uh, we purchase it for a particular price prior uh, to um, the Gabriel, and then afterwards it's lower. So we will be recognising that on our books as a, a kind of accounting recognition of a loss. So you may see variances as we're forecasting out to the year end. But at the moment, uh, we're tracking with that, with those exceptions. All right. Any questions? Councillor Cranston? Yeah. Um, the table on page... What is it? 278. Um, does that answer Councillor Gregory's question? We've done the budgeted financing costs of 4.1 but the actual cost of financing is 6.9 million. Is that? No, um, this, this is the, um, the swaps. The swaps. It is the swaps, yeah. So that, that's the cost of financing um, with it, but it doesn't take into account if we were paying the principal payments and things back. So that's a, the two parts of it. So part of it does, it says this is the interest cost, uh, which is around four, I think probably goes up to six million over the next three years. So that's just the servicing of the loan, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I was probably, most of it, that probably would have answered your question. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cranston. Any other questions in regards to... Councillor Holden? Yeah, I'm still trying to find out where I've made the notes. Um, I you covered the 2.8 mm -hmm. swaps by that. Page um, 278. Um, you have answered this before, we're just checking again on the, on the employee benefits. We're 42 mil through at halfway point. Um, yet, um, normally we're 33 at full point. Um, which leaves us only 11 mil, 11.5 mil for the rest of the year. Does that mean we're going to be <coughs> No, we expect to be under at this stage. Um, it expects to be under, and that's mainly because if some of the vacancies have come on the time that we expected, uh, that we're carrying. So that's forecasting. So what we try also to look at this is, is there something uh, where our forecast may be over and under at that year end? And what is the position that you're actually seeing as variances? It's more like those variances are indicative kind of the overall process. It's not going to be, hey, we're way over in the employee costs and it looks like it will be under by year end. So, <clears throat> so if normally our way goes around with two mil, how can we get through with only 11 mil? It's, um, you're talking four months? Four months, sorry. Yeah, so you're talking sorry. four months yes. to go. Um, and yes. we forecast out, um, depends if there is vacancies, there's obviously you know, points in and out um, with regards to those. So, yeah. Um, and then next question. The next question was around capital expenditure. Um, which is heading to 70 mil. Um, it's <coughs> the capital 
expenditure is heading for 70 mil, and we have a nice itemised page which shows where the capital expenditure mm -hmm. is allocated. Thanks for that too. Um, what's the chances of getting the same sort of, uh, spread on the, work, on, the, on the wages bill and getting that allocated out um, to give a bit of clarity as to where the spend is put? Uh, you, you, you want the forecast of what that would be by the Marion is a, a sort of an item. Um, same, so I'm just understanding like, like that, or, or what yeah, at the moment we thing? just all, um, you know the, the wages spend is just one figure. Yes, it is. And we never get to see it allocated to the various enterprises. That are so one of the things that you do kind of see the reporting overall is in the next report. It says we have those activities tracking, and yes. where is it the uh, overall expenditure, what are the income, and then within it they'll say, hey, we're on track with our overall cost, or, or otherwise we're over or under. So you, you get those kind of details reported on how those activities are doing. This is, kind of, it, it, is at, it is consolidated up to the council level. So that next report includes wages? It includes all their costs. Right. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't separate it out, but it says. But if it was due to um, a significant portion of the variance under or over, um, they would. It would be explained within those costs. Okay. Yeah. Well, I could work out the amount by taking capital off each of those costs. Uh, no, it's no. Um, no, it wouldn't be as simple. With it. I'll try to perhaps you know, understand what you're um, wanting or needing, and then I can understand, okay, how can we uh, report it differently so you can get that assurance. We'll talk later, yep, sure. Councillor Parata, did you have your hand up? Oh, yeah, a um, couple of things. Um, on page 279, um, I know we're going to discuss this later, but point five around the dividend, that's an issue. <coughs> Not to discuss here, but annoying. Um, that's at point five on page two, eight, oh, so dividends. Yeah, dividends. Um, I just wanted to know about the employee benefit expenses. Um, are we actively planning to fill those vacancies? Um, I would be saying from or James, the costs. so two things. There's one is about uh, where we are with regards to our um, expenditure against the actuals, and what happens if we actually don't use those, Yeah. right? So what we do, which is coming up to that part, if we think at the end of the year there are costs that we rated for that um, didn't occur in that year but needs to occur in the next year, we transfer that, what we call, to a special reserves and we don't rate for it twice. <coughs> okay. So that's, hopefully that answers... Yes, it does. All right. Yeah, awesome. So we're not taking it twice, we're just no. over. The other thing is that page 286, which is that graph? 286. Um, I may just need um, assistance reading this, but how I'm reading it is that we're currently spending more than we budgeted for. Right. That's right. And is that causing us an issue? So the main parts of where we're ahead of what we um, expected is due to either um, external grants that were given after the adoption of the annual plan. So the two parts of that was probably the insurance proceeds, especially up at the uh, Wainaki. Uh, the other parts of this was either from CIP funding, um, which was after the adoption of the um, uh, annual plan in terms of the roading program, or and or um, any category three um, things with regard to those. So basically, it isn't a concern. Most of those, as said, are reached by external grant funding. Right. So we're, we're spending more because we have more. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, who else wants to speak on this paper? No one, we've had three councillors. Any more questions? Have it a move. Yeah. Have it a second. 
Moved by Councillor Farihinga, seconded by Councillor Foster. Any more discussion or queries? Yeah, one more question, please, Your Worship. Um, and that's on page um, 280, and it's the movement of total heat before, um, which is a movement of the asset in rough, so total um, non current assets have moved roughly 300. 300 mil, is that correct? 310 mil. Just wondering, is that got something to do with? Yeah. 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 to three. But it's, it's a movement of oh, right. three. So there's two parts of this. This is a year to date against what we were expect to be by the end of the financial year. So yep. this is, and we say that by the end of the financial year, um, due to valuations and things that come through for our property equipment, it's likely to be more, which is the main increase in that bottom line um, with it. And so that's where it occurs. So it is a bit difficult to say, how do, how do I see that and what do I map it again? Um, it's very difficult to phase the balance sheet. Um, so this is just saying, this is where we are, this is what we said we would be by um, the end of the financial year. And most of that is to do um, with either the, we were saying about 70 million in increases in purchasing of fixed assets. Um, but then most of that, the rest of it will be the valuations in our other assets increasing, which is like roading or any other, other parts of it. So that's where that difference is expected to be by the year end. Okay, so, so property... Supplementary uh, question. Sorry, supplementary question. Um, can you, so property, plant and equipment is going from, <coughs> these big numbers are hard to call, um, 2.7 billion to 3 billion, right? Yes. 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 And so where is that, where's that movement coming from? Um, two parts. Um, is again, mostly is only 70 million of that is the actual physical works that we're doing this year in our capital expenditure. The rest of it says, actually, what's your value of your assets at the end of the year? And if they've moved up and are worth more, that's where the, just, the rest of it comes through. When we say it's through valuations, it's basically what are they worth at the end of the year? <coughs> you then context, because it is a good question if you're um, asking about... We say at the end of 30th of June, we had about $2.6 billion worth of assets. To uh, put that in context, uh, we would have been recognising uh, in a normal situation around 2.8, 2.9 billion. We impaired assets because we lost them either through the bridges we were wiped away, or alternatively, uh, uh, especially in the assets in the roading sector, where there wasn't those roads. And so this is saying, actually, we're doing the work, those are reinstalled, um, and also the valuation is the uptake in, in that part. So that's kind of the movement. We're so we're saying, yeah, our, most of the assets by the end of the year, we expect it to be back to the three million billion. <laughs> no, so I take it. <laughs> page 274, so I do have a mover and a seconder. It's just a note in the report, so if there are no other questions, moved by Councillor Whanuhinga, seconded by Councillor Foster. All in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Have we done the agenda oh, according to staff? No, no we haven't agenda. done the GHL paid by for not to do that. Cool. So let's go back to that one, which is uh, 259. Okay, Pauline, do you want to open this for us? It's a noting report. Um, yes, so just like we've seen the other statement events and the other things we have, Council and Patrol Organisation, they've got to report on their six months. This is GHL's six months actual uh, to 31st of December in the 23-24 financial year. So basically, is providing in the public arena in terms of their uh, results and performance uh, to date. Uh, they may not be able to answer all of your questions, in which case some of those questions we will uh, 
be able to answer at a later time, but happy to take any questions that I can. <coughs> The continued liability of one million for archive storage. What's, what's that about? Um, so, in terms of that, there's a remedy um, in terms of uh, uh, the archives. So there may be some kind of mould in there, probably generated from the air conditioner that was in there. And so, it is work that we've identified that we need, may need to have been. Remedied at some point, so this is the question that GHL um, have put in there. If you want specifics, please <coughs> be able to answer a little bit more uh, with regards to Mr. Beatty. Yeah, um, through the chair, some time ago there was a decision made um, around the HVAC system, they decommissioned the HVAC system in the archives um, that called for issues around mould control in a particular section of the building. Uh, which has affected um, a number of our records. Uh, the environmental controls are, are in place at the moment to keep that in pain, um, but there is a longer term fix around uh, those records and what needs to occur to bring them back to the work. So they are um, looking to replace the HVAC system with a system that meets the environmental standards required by the building consent and an archives building. Um, and in addition to that, a remedy project around the restoration of the records. So you mentioned what we've got. Um, where are we at with the digitisation? Is it? Uh, that's a separate project. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so yeah, digitisation is in the Emerald Building, and all our files there are secure and found. We're about uh, forty something percent through that project now. Forty something percent. Yeah, um, this is this is completely different to that. This is our archives that are down at the Bank Street building, uh, which is where the issue has occurred. Thank you. Councillor Telford, thank um, you. You just sub supplementary, um, James. Um, just on that, um, that is a contingent liability of a million dollars that DHL are looking at, which then affects the bottom line profit. Um, is this not in included? Is this not covered by insurance? This is a, a problem that this system is not has failed. Is does insurance not come into that at all? That would be a question for DHL. I have to assume, given that we're putting in a contingent liability of a million dollars, that the answer to that would be no. We'll make sure to ask that, Councillor. Any more questions in regards to half yearly reports? <coughs> Councillor Elder. Um, page number 303 on the East Cape Road, um, really after feedback from <coughs> um, the coast, and not having been to any talks up there. What's the general feedback up there on the um, improvements? What page are you on? It's the next page. It's the next paper. Just let the GHL report at this stage. Oh, sorry. Okay, if there are no other questions. I don't want to rush it if people still want to chat. Just to carry my rephrase that. I don't want to chat. If you've got something to add, please feel free to put your hand up. Councillor Farahinga. Through my conflict in noting that I'll be abstaining from. Oh, good. Councillor Thompson, thank you. You might still have a question, but it might be better for later yeah. in regards yeah. to page 261, where they made a net profit of 1.1 million. Um, but they had budgeted a lot for 707. Uh, again, that's the part of the assessments <coughs> and where they expect to be and the forecasting here a loss, which is why that, that is where they stay in the mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no more questions, is someone willing to move for the noting report? I'm willing to move the noting report, if we can do Councillor Robinson, seconded. All in favour? On three, carried. Okay. So are you saying to me we have, uh, you've done everything in the paper now up to where we are? Yes. 288, councillors. And as always, this is broken up. So I have got 10 different sections that I'm going to break this up into. So I need everyone to be smart. 
and on top of there again. Bring your best self to this report. So if you have something to ask or add, I will call out what sections we have, and we have different directors yeah. talking to different sections. Hey, Pauline? That's right, and they might have a swap, swap, a swap guard. So we'll, we'll take the hot seat here. Yeah, with take Mrs. the hot seat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let us start with environmental services and protection. So, councillors, uh, you will be, that's page 291 okay. to 299. So, if you've made a note there or you've got some questions, good morning, Ms. Thatcher Smart. Yeah. Any questions? So what we're covering, councils, is with environmental services and protection, resource consent, enforcement, building consent, harbour master, enforcement compliance, right up to page 299. I see lots of beautiful green ticks in the end of this paper, port and safety harbour, Resource consents, lots of green ticks, animal control, lots of green ticks. Thank you, team. Are we speeding through it or are you just giving us a summary? No, so what you can ask questions in regards to 291 to 299. So that area covering consents and, and so I'm breaking up this report in 10 sections. So you want to speak to the first bit? Yeah, I just um, I just wanted to know about the, um, it says building consents. I, I can see lots of green ticks. in your page number. Sorry, 292. Two ninety two. Um, I can see lots of green ticks, and I hate to be the look at the only X on the page. Um, but can I get an understanding of why the performance declined over quarters one and two for building consent? Yeah. So um, through your worship, the, that that's just the volume, the sheer volume of having to go through the consenting processes with the recovery. Um, so it's just we haven't been able to keep up with the demand of consents that are coming in. When we do building consents, I've never had to do a building consent, so can you just explain to me, when you do a building consent, is it for a new building? Is it for being allowed to live in the house you do live in? Like, what is a building consent, and why do people ask for them? <coughs> so building consent will be for a new dwelling or any um, significant material amendments or alterations to your existing dwelling. So, like the house lifting, yeah, that requires a consent. So, could we say that um, how many building consents that come into council, and if there's been a significant increase, might indicate the growth of our region? You could potentially, but yeah, and and um, we do recall on that. I think we should have some numbers here. Actually. Oh, yeah, I, I was just I was just wondering, and uh, is the is the building consents team adequately resourced in terms of? Do we have enough people doing that? Uh, no, no, we don't. Um, I think and the difficulty is around recruiting for building consents because you require a particular qualification and they're in really heavy demand. So what we do is work with our other councils. So we have um, a really good example where we're working with Oportiki Council. They're dealing with some of the building consents um, for Te Karaka, for example. And that helps us to be able to meet the demand. So um, it's a it's a balance of trying to scale up to meet the demand, and the demand might only be for a peak period of time. But it's also that we know it's really hard to try and get really good building consent um, qualified people and to really do the work. Can I ask a supplementary question? Yes. Um, I really appreciate the answer. Um, is the qualification <coughs> a hard one or a long one? And is that something we can maybe get some people? Are some local people growing into that space? I'm not sure like okay. all the details of that, but I can find out, and that's a really good question and thank you to do to try and underscore the need. Thank you. Councillor Pahuri Huriwai, good morning to you. What do you know, Glad you made it safely back. Um, page 295. I just had a question around the dog control bylaw. Um, I just recall when we were at Rangi Mai Waho, that we asked the CE to do a paper for us on the rural dogs and I just wonder, I don't know, I remind, uh, it could have been done and I've just forgotten or, um, or where were we at, at with that because the current bylaw didn't cover, um, didn't cover what the, the farmers came to petition us about that day uh, with the worrying dogs. Thank you. Um, 
sort of Mr. Beatty who's got Sorry, the answer. I'm all screen councillor. I heard a goodie why, but um, yes, we did have a comprehensive paper come back to council on that particular matter. We settled that, um, I think, quite comprehensively in terms of the worrying dogs. So it wasn't too long after the hui that we had at Angbuck that we furnished that paper. Um, it coincided with the, the final papers that we had around the dog control policy and the dog control bylaw. Thank you for that. Okay. Councillor Robinson, you. On page 296, <clears throat> there's a number of uh, initiatives that are yet to be started, uh, one which I thought was quite fascinating. Um, create and undertake a survey on background noise. I sort of couldn't find any other further information on what that entailed. <laughs> um, we'll get some information back to you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and the, um, the other thing was the support owners in Abapuni Road who have contaminated land. Um, can you just give us a couple of sentences on how big or bad a situation that might be, and is there a report somewhere buried in the other <coughs> report coming? I'm not sure, through your worship, I'm not sure if there is a I have to check on that, but the Awapuni land, that, and there are significant contamination issues of life and down that area, which is why the initiative is there to be able to provide a bit more support around how can you remediate that area, or what's been done for that area. So there's a, a, been a challenge with the district, a known challenge, but uh, the initiative is there to try and do more about that. So it's a, it's a um, question, I just want to know sort of what is anticipated in regard to that initiative? Like, is it going to be a financial commitment by council? Because I would imagine most of the property owners there bought those properties with their eyes wide open. Um, I know it's historical. There's the um, there was the old uh, timber works there, just east of um, Upper Puni School. It's more, yeah, it's more the industrial land side okay. uh, where it's impacting. But we can provide some more description around what that entails from the team. Yeah, thank you. I can take lead on that. Thank you, Mr. Beatty. Okay, last question, Councillor Newman. Yeah. Um, yeah, just page 292. Um, reach of consent. Um, it's got a tick, um, performance in terms of delivery, um, and it says we are progressing as planned. Um, I just would like to query that a little bit. I've had a meeting with a group of very disgruntled people, that are, um, business people that are. Um, it's really affecting their businesses on how long it's taking to get some of these consents through. And they've got crews and whatnot trying to do roading projects. So um, that's not the feeling I'm getting from the people that uh, are out there. Um, I know there's a group of them getting it together to try and take this further. Six months, for instance, six months trying to get a culvert um, ticked off to put it on a, on a project. Holds the whole, whole process up. That's what brings this consent. Um, but this part of it's holding it up. So, I would just query that, but it says it's, it's all on track. So why are we getting this come at us um, from from the people out there? Does anyone? So, yeah, through your worship, um, so the numbers are the numbers, and how we've, we've um, tracked them as you are required to through statute. So that's why we put all the green ticks there. The people's feelings around how they experience the consenting process is something. I'm aware of the issues that have been raised in <coughs> our uh, resource committee section and the team have done some really good work to um, improve on some of the areas that we've identified in the past. We've still got a lot of um, skill development happening in the mm -hmm. team as we've built that capacity up. So councillors that have been around the table for a while will know some of the challenges that we've had in the past and that we've worked really, really hard to, um, to address. And consenting isn't always like an easy, an easy domain, right? People aren't going to be happy if they don't get their consent. I think what we uh, know too is that we've got plan, plan issues, um, but then we also have a whole change coming up with this national government um, around making consents a lot easier uh, to, be, to be sought. So I appreciate that there are some concerns there. The data is accurate in terms of our ability and delivering what we're required to statutory, but that doesn't change how people feel at the end of the day. Okay, I'm going to... Excuse me, I do have a question. Quick smart. Quick smart. Um, page 303. 
Just wanted some feedback on Councillor Elder, listening ears, I said we're going to break it up in 10 sections. 303 is our next section, so, so we I'll, are I'll now... Talk, I'll ask questions. Yeah, Jocelyn, so we're breaking this up in 10 sections, so you will have more than enough opportunity. I'm not trying to cut people off, I'm trying to make it easier for staff to respond. So please make sure you stick to our sections. Jocelyn, thank you. Your Worship, thank you. Sorry, did you want to make a comment in terms of the comment from Councillor Talbot? Um, through your through your Worship, through your Worship, uh, thank you, Nadine. I think you uh, you surmised it um, really well. Although, as as you as you see on 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 paper, we are um, delivering on our statutory requirements and. Um, we we are hearing loud and clear how um, how the, you know some some you know how how some of the feelings are around some of the time frames um, and yeah I just shoulder your sentiment Nadine thank you. All right, thank you for that. Okay, councillors, now we move into our next section, which is our roading. Page three hundred, Mr. Barry, you can come to the hot seat. <laughs> Councillor Elder, you were in that section. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, just one thing, feedback from, I haven't made it clear, but I suppose, has there been any feedback on the um, East Cape um, protection Shane Jones's money? Um, just rephrase okay. that, Minister Shane Jones's <laughs> money. Thank you. Um, so, is there any local feedback on how that was going? <laughs> No, but we're hosting the minister on Friday, so we'll be able to get a little bit of information. <coughs> so, through the chair, uh, we, we were at um, two nights ago. Uh, uh, local feedback uh, tends to be stronger in areas where things aren't well. Okay, so uh, generally not forthcoming in areas where things are working well. Um, what people did comment on was the, uh, the road to the lighthouse was a lot better. A lot of that's attributed to just a, a good uh, settling of land around where the slips are further down. That's actually past where the works are. They were, the community was silent on the works in itself. Um, uh, work, work in itself was silent on that, on that work, in fact. Yep, which, which means no complaints. Okay, people, we are on our next section, which is roading, starting at page 300 to page 309. Thank you. Footpaths, public transport, streets for people, walking, cycling. Hot later. Thank you for that. Then we are going to move to our next section, which is our land. Oh, why did you wait till I moved on? Councillor Thompson. Um, yeah, just in regards to the RFSs on page 308. Um, so, so there might be a, So that's one of the people come that uh, so they haven't, nothing happens. Um, so there might be a thousand. Unresolved RFS is here. In the first quarter, it's 64.6%. Per cent. I'd say 30%. That's, that's 300 people who have replied to, which is mm -hmm. sort of, that's a lot of people. I think it should be about how many people we're actually talking about there who, who haven't had a reply. Yep. Uh, uh, through the chair, I appreciate uh, the question and our response is, is, is a couple of things. One is the RFSs are at unprecedented levels, so there's higher amounts. We're tracking at, uh, I think, 64% versus 8 or something like that. Um, so it's it's quite a quite a difference between what we're, our target rate and what, so we acknowledge that. Um, also, a lot of our works is, is sort of governed by the risk recovery, um, and we are, that's, that's causing us to prioritise on recovery work. Um, the RFSs, I would encourage them to engage with the 
people is uh, still very important, but they have been, in many cases, deprioritised. Often RFS is referred to, in numerous cases, to the same event, the same, the same things, and maybe we're not as uh, uh, resourced and able to get back to all individuals as we normally would. Um, but I, I, uh, so, so those, those are the reasons I'd give. That's, that's Um, Councillor Gregory and then <coughs> Councillor Foster. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Supplementary to uh, what Kiki was asking, does that mean that if I bring in an RFS and then my neighbour brings it and it doesn't get assigned the same number, the same problem? Uh, I'm uncertain if, if that is it. That's potentially, sorry, yeah, a different yeah. ticket. I'll get so a different, a different, different ticket time. for the same jobs. Correct. But there'll be a tag. So, like, if there is, you know, 74, whatever, Wainami Road, for example, there's a tag in the system that will enable you to connect to all those RFSs that have that particular problem. So, you can tag. But each person ID for the RFS. Councillor Foster, thank you. I was, I was just going to add to that as well because the RFS system was, a, was put in because that is our direct contact with the, <coughs> the public about their concerns. And um, I, would, I would like to think that if we're only tracking at this amount, percentage at the moment, and we know there's a problem, that we'll be resourcing it better to try and rectify it because our reputation um, does rely hugely on, on the response from RFS and um, from a lot of people that are disgruntled, it is because they are not getting the response that they, um, or even a, any response, you know, so even an email or a phone call is um, certainly better than nothing, so nothing is not acceptable, really. Yeah, I'd just like to, so if it's, if it's is that situation, then um, I would like to think that we are um, actually adding more resources to try and rectify that. That is a direct link, the AI only really. <coughs> So if I may throw your worship, that's probably a question for our engagement um, and responsiveness director who's responsible for the RFS system itself. Um, it's a system uh, issue yeah. of resourcing, as you've pointed out. Um, and what we've heard uh, in the engagement meetings is, yeah, I lodged an RFS and no one ever got back to me. So there's two different things. There's an issue around what we can practically achieve through RFS being lodged because some of the stuff is actually a 10-year plan um, issue or something we're going to be funding for, <coughs> the ability of staff to go back to the people that have raised RFSs and our constraint has been that it often falls on those managers that are required to be out on the roads doing doing the work to then come back in and sit on the desk and you know, close that off. So we've got to get better around or think about how we provide the administrative support to those on the front line to be then able to respond to the customers and that's something that we've been looking at as a project for this year. Right. The other thing I'd like to promote, and, and I've, me personally, I've had this, uh, an awesome response from RFSs. You know, we're counsellors, and if we put our RFS in, uh, I've, I've, I've cured a lot of problems from ratepayers and people out there um, through the RFS system if they've come to me. So I would promote the fact that hey, if you have a problem, come to your local counsellor and we can address it for you if, if we see fit. No, but that creates it. The system should work. It well, should not come through councillors to make a system work. In principle, it's great what you're saying, but if we promote that, then your office will become <laughs> our office. Yeah. So what we need to make sure is that the system work, and then where there are unintended consequences or someone has maybe not picked up, we can then assist with it. <coughs> I would ask us rather to make sure our system is, is looked at than, than trying to divert it to my office. Okay, we move to our next section, which is solid waste. That is page 317. To... Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Okay. Okay, councillors, any questions takes us to page 322. 
talk about our solid waste. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. We're on track for introducing curbside recycling bins. You know, I'll have to follow through on that and just put it in for a show today, so I will be coming back to you about that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pauline. Um, as Ian said, it might be a, a little bit delayed, but the purchases are uh, looking to deliver in June or July. And in terms of the curbside collection, then that's the service delivery, because that was always the first part, is actually getting the infrastructure um, to enable that to occur, and the next part would be as part of the service agreement that comes through uh, with it. But that's that's the stage we were at um, in terms of that overall process. Supplementary, is there something to that effect on our website? Because this is something that our community, as we know, needs to be brought along at a really early stage because it's a change in, in behaviour and has, has failed in other places because, or has not been as successful in other, other communities because of um, failure to bring the community along and change their behaviour. Um, I don't want us to... <laughs> It's an opportunity, this is a transformational opportunity, and I really want us to um, not be trying to do it at the last minute and make sure we publicise it and lead, good lead in time. Yeah, I think, um, for your worship, we will need to just bring a, um, an update paper back um, to operations and law council on that, and that will also outline what the comments approach will be. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, any more questions of Mr Hudson in regards to solid waste? If not, Thank you, Kiri. Thank you. Please, yes, please, question. Councillor Pahura Huriwai, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kiri, just a, a question on, um, it's page on, on page 320, it's the third box down, around the contestable waste funding. Um, when, when, when are application, when are people who applied notified? I just know of a couple of people that are waiting to hear. I thought that would have been, that was well overdue for um, closure and applica applicants being notified. Are you able to confirm for me, please? No, I have to, fi have to find out on that again. Um, and can you just notify, which, which box is it on uh, 320? Uh, 320 on the right hand side, th four boxes down, contestable waste funding applications are open, but I think they closed a while ago. Um, that was on the waste management fund. Yep. The council piece. Yeah. So just uh, if we, we can have some feedback. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that, Terry. Oh, can I just cover the other piece of building more? What other piece do you um, cover? So Liverpool community. Yes. Okay, councillors. I'm going to take you to page 345. Thank we just. Sorry, I've had the hand up for a while. Um, just on solid waste, the uh, Tokomaru Bay uh, meeting. Uh, had issues with their relocation and that. I just want an update on that. Some of them felt that the relocation that we'd chosen was going to be just as vulnerable as the previous one. And, you know, so that was something that comes through the public meetings. Okay, Toko. Toko. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, well, it's, uh, Councillor Pahura, you If, if it was going to be inundated in the future. So that was just their concern of where the site was. Uh, and so that could be the other report. Um, closing that off on the curbside. Okay. 345, we just, while Kerry is here, 345, so it's livable communities, to 352. Biodiversity, recreation, cultural activities, catchments and diversity, biodiversity. Thank you, Kiri, and we look forward to you, to you getting back to us um, on those questions yep, raised. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Barry, you've got three sections. 
in a row. So we saw in starting councillors on page 323. We start with our wastewater, then we're going to move to our water supply, and then we'll do urban storm. So 323 right through to 345. All our waters and wastewater and storm water stuff all clumped together. Robinson, thank you. I wonder if the CEO is able to provide us any update on the proposed MOU, whether this is the forum for that or not. No, I've got no update on that. Thank you. No update yet. Councillor Telford, thank you. Yeah, um, just on um, water supply. Um, page. Sorry, page 331. Um, it's not specifically in here, but I'm just just a query. Considering the fast tracking uh, consenting that we're um, looking at, um, to do with our water supply, have, have we got anything in the pipeline or thoughts around um, other water supplies? We, we know how vulnerable we, we were around um, losing our main one, and we've got the second one to do with river. Have we got any major projects here that may fall into that category? Uh, at this point, we're not pushing on a, uh, additional water supply. Um, as I've sort of said, in the strategic space, it's not, it's not a focus. But we should put on the paper tomorrow for operations. We have the submission on the fast track bill. I think we've identified some of those potential projects that could be fast tracked and one in particular was a request that came from uh, Ewe in terms of more storage so we'll um, put that forward as a, not, as a potential fast track project. I just want to make sure all councillors are aware that there's also a late a paper that was not in the agenda just make sure you read that that's the fast tracking one a small paper but just make sure you um, read that as well. Okay, Councillor Foster and then Councillor Cranston, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm just on page 327, um, response to wastewater system faults. Um, yeah, I understand uh, the situation we have with the um, tremendous amount of rainfall for the last year, but um, my question is, has it, I, and um, we know that Kai T in particular is um, vulnerable with rain-wise and there's a, there's a huge amount of work in that, in that area. Is there any other areas that were identified as problematic um, with that amount of rainfall that we need to be addressing with drain-wise? Has it, uh, has it um, increased the scope of drain-wise? Uh, a lot of the challenges last year was the elevated uh, water levels, so that uh, had, uh, formed the background volume of water flowing into wastewater pipes, increasing the flows and reducing the capacity in there, so you'll have overflows at uh, for, for lesser rain events than you would in, in, in a normal dry year. Uh, uh, other areas, uh, uh, not direct concerns related to waste, uh, wa additional water addition to the wastewater, but um, there's mention in this report about the increase in TOMOs. So uh, for the audience here, TOMOs are where you get a, uh, a void created, and that's often around a, a pipe because there's a conduit for water then the water pulls in the soil around it and eventually creates a void and the road can pull the levers above it and collapses. So that's what a TOMO is. And Auckland had a really big spectacular one recently. Um, uh, uh, so <coughs> what, where we have sandy soils, that's increased. So that's, that's, that's not a drain-wise issue, but it's an issue related to um, uh, the, 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 the stormwater and water flow. Uh, but I don't have no specific drain-wise actions from this. The information coming out is harder to, to zero in on. Yeah. Um, uh, um, issues. Soil drainage problem. Yeah, uh, and then, then it's a road surface problem as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Foster, thank you. 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 Thank you.
else for grants that you released? Yeah, the wastewater treatment plant upgrade project stated as 122 over on the basis of um, clarifier and injury performance issues. Just want confidence that that's not an issue that's going to go way through the budget or be on top of it at that level or what? You know. uh, for, the, for the chair, for the wastewater um, issue, it's something we're still working on. Uh, it looks like there might be a challenge between the, the different pr uh, processes. So there's a, prior to the final filter, there's a clarifier. Clarifier puts out a product <coughs> at the end, which uh, might not meet the spec or the filter that follows it. So we're trying to get the best performance out of the clarifier uh, and then re-looking at the filter, what the filter might need to be uh, adjusted to take a, uh, a higher solids loading. Uh, unsure as yet that those discussions are undertaken and they sit within the um, performance requirements of, of the project. So is it within contingency? So it, it, could, it could end up with a cost implication uh, and, and I'm trying to get my hands around what that might be in terms of cost and time. Councillor Thompson. Just a quick question on the drain wise. Um, I saw a map where the drain wise bit has been. Um, to me, the problem is in Kaiti, and that's where they should concentrate. But there's a lot of areas over this side of town, and there's lots of areas that haven't been addressed yet. Is there a reason why that is? Uh, it depends, um, I think, how you look at it. I would see the problem is not isolated to a particular place. We, IT is simply the area where there's the least headroom in the, in, in the network, but ultimately we'd like to get efficient wastewater everywhere. Um, uh, but I can ask the question for you on why that's not prioritised. Um, but I, I think we need, we need to address a whole system as an aggregate. Drain-wise, that's the aim of it. But um, I can ask that question. Good. Councillors, we are, I'm seeing the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. We are at section number eight, which is our re nine. Our regional leadership is 353 to 366. Who is our person? Is that Mr. James Beatty? That's Swan. 353. Let us go there and I'll update you on what it is. A lot of things. Governance, democracy, science, strategic planning, support services, emergency management, Māori responsiveness, governance and democracy, science, lots of stuff. digging themselves out of such a huge amount of work that came with last year's um, cyclone. And we can see this takes us to um, the end of the year, last year, right? This is the, that quarter, but really seeing a great effort by staff to try and get things back to normal and back on track. So we'll convey our plans to staff. Any questions on that section? You guys are like the A team today. Last section is our commercial operations. Three, six, and seven. Thank you, Pauline. Councillor Cranston, thank you. Sorry, I went a bit fast. Can I go a little bit backwards? Just uh, Liverpool communities, the loss of revenues is 1 million, 400 on office revenue and 600 on cap revenue. Uh, page 3, 4, 7. Um, I 
I see the, the capital expenses are low to kind of match, so there must have been something happening there. That there it says the operating revenue and it says revenue is under um, five percent of pay. Um, it says that was to take community expected and adopted the annual plan. We expected the Kiwi calls to be operational uh, for the community. That's probably the main variance um, in that one. Is, it, is that what you said three, four, six in the main for your, for your yeah, I come off that table. Oh, yeah, so that, that there, and then it's explained on page 347, it goes into each of the main things, operating revenue, operating expenditure, and then your capital expenditure, and then it explains the variance. And, and what it's just saying that it was originally anticipated that, that pools might have been open earlier than what they were, and so there's a variance um, between that uh, revenue and what was expected. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to move the report. Thank you, Councillor Farahinga. I do have a mover in Councillor Farahinga, seconder in Councillor Farata. All in favour, I have the contrary carried. Thank you for that, Dean and the team. <coughs> Am I correct that we are now at the end of our public agenda? So I will close our public meeting. Thank you very much, Joel.